When I say tablet, most people probably think of an iPad, an Android tablet, or some sort of Windows device. For the sake of this video, when I talk about tablets, that's more what I'm going to be meaning specifically in this video, Android tablets. And from the inception of these sorts of devices, they've been in sort of a weird place. And the reason for this is because phones came first. The OS was made for phones. The applications, therefore, were also made for phones. So simply taking all of that prior work that had been done and putting it onto a larger screen, perhaps a screen that's set in a different aspect ratio horizontally instead of vertically, was always going to lead to a lot of growing pains, and we have seen that borne out over the last decade plus. All the way back in 2011, Google released a version of Android called Android Honeycomb, that was meant to address some of these issues. It was meant to make Android play better with landscape-oriented devices. But of course, for those of you that used Honeycomb, uh, you can probably agree with me, it wasn't very good. It did not look particularly good. I believe it performed quite poorly as well, and it did nothing to address the fact that the applications, again, were not made for large horizontal screens. They were made for somewhat small at that time and getting larger by the year, but vertically oriented screens. Now, of course, I shouldn't say it did nothing in that direction. They did try to get a few apps working better on these larger tablet screens, but by and large, no real momentum was gained. And of course, Android tablets have never been particularly popular. There are some very good ones on the market. There are the Galaxy tabs in particular that are very, very good. But again, they've never reached the sort of saturation that iPads have reached. And because of that, there's never really been a strong incentive from app developers to make applications that work well on tablet-style devices. Even with Google pushing and prodding in the past, trying to encourage this to happen, making Honeycomb, it never really happened. The ball never got rolling. No momentum was ever built up. Most recently, Google released a version of Android that they dubbed Android 12L. This was basically a stopgap between 12 and 13, but it was meant specifically for devices with large screens. As you can see here, Google says 12L is a special feature drop that makes Android 12 even better on large screens. You can see here dual pane layouts for the notification shade. Lots of other system settings and things like that have a new dual pane layout, which does in fact make things a lot better, uh, visually pleasing, more comfortable, and more useful on larger displays. They even added this taskbar, which allows you to quickly multitask, giving you a reason to want to use a big screen. Yeah, that app you're using may not look great on a screen this size, but if you use this new taskbar to split screen, it's gonna work really well. And as sort of a way to deal with these apps that don't necessarily work well on these big screens, they added letterboxing, which is a controversial thing. But if you think about it on some apps, it makes sense, right? Because take something like Instagram that absolutely does not work on tablets. Maybe you want to hold the thing this way. You open up Instagram, you have to rotate it. Well, with this, Instagram can be opened in the native landscape orientation of your tablet and can just be letterboxed for compatibility. There were also a whole bunch of sort of under the hood improvements made as well. 12L, as far as I'm concerned, pushed the tablet thing further more on the Android operating system than any update prior had. Even if we didn't see the results, the fruits of that labor popping up immediately. And why didn't we see the fruits of that labor popping up immediately? Well, it's because Android tablets had kind of fallen off a cliff over the last few years. So why is Google making this renewed push, which I think has a lot of merit now of all times? Well, there's a really simple answer, and it is foldable devices. Android tablets have never been as popular as I think some people wanted them to be, as Google, Samsung, wanted them to be. But this new kind of device that allows you to have a phone and a tablet in your pocket at the same time actually does, I believe, stand a reasonable chance to change that. 
In North America alone, this market is set to really open up. Pun somewhat intended, you'll hear in just a moment. We have the Z flips and the Z folds. The folds are the more important ones for this video. We have the Pixel fold. We also have the OnePlus Open coming later on this year. Samsung has come out and said they expect a 50% increase in their foldable sales year over year. They are continually selling more Z devices as each year goes by. The Pixel Fold has sold better, I think, already than Google expected it to. There were shortages. The device was sold out from the word go, and I believe the OnePlus Open is going to be a very successful device for OnePlus if the metrics here on my channel uh, are any indication at all. To put it succinctly, there is more excitement around Android tablets than there has ever been before. And I believe that now there is more pressure on developers to get this done than ever before, to support tablet devices more than ever before. And I can already hear what some of you are saying. Shane, are you crazy? Not that many people own these foldable devices. You're talking about a small amount of people pushing these developers to make a change when maybe in the past, there were already a ton of Android tablets. Why would these particular customers matter? I actually think that perception has a lot to do with it. These Z devices, these foldable devices, kind of have this prestige air about them. And the idea that there is a device out there that is an expensive device, and this particular app developer, take your pick, maybe it's Instagram or whatever, doesn't support this uber premium device, I think that perception works against that developer and might actually push them to make a move. And while we're talking about Instagram, let's kind of double down there because they've actually just rolled out a tablet friendly layout for the Z Fold devices. It's not quite arrived on something like the Pixel Fold yet, maybe that is coming. But we're actually beginning to see real movement. TikTok has a layout for foldable devices now. Again, we are beginning to finally see movement in this direction and Google not just with the under the hood stuff for Android, but with other policy changes, they're actually pushing harder now than they ever have before. I covered this in an earlier video, but going forward, if you are searching for an app in the Play Store and you have two similar apps, one app supports tablets and the other app doesn't, the one that supports tablets is going to be prioritized in the search results. That is a big deal. Developers support tablets and you'll have a leg up over your competitors that aren't. And speaking of the Play Store, it has been updated to better support tablet devices. It's getting a major overhaul on large screens and it looks really, really good to go along with this. Google has basically overhauled almost all of their apps to work really well on tablets. The push to get this to happen is stronger than it has ever been, not just in Android, not just in the apps, but also in the policies. And that is all due to these foldable devices. Let's be real about this. It's not because of the Galaxy Tab S9 or whatever it is this year. I don't remember. I think it's the S9. It is because of foldables. It is because of the momentum behind those devices. People are more and more demanding. If I've got this device, I want the app to work good here, and I want it to work well here as well. And because of that, like I said, we are finally seeing a, a concerted effort from all parties involved, and things are beginning to move. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're skeptical, I get it. I understand the skeptical nature. Absolutely. We should all be kind of sitting back and saying, that all sounds great, but like, let's see it happen. Let's see it actually all come to fruition before we bust out the streamers and the cake and begin celebrating. I totally understand that because we've seen sorts of pushes in this direction in the past that never amount to do anything. But I do genuinely feel like this is different because... There's a different device at the center of it, a new kind of device. But again, it's not just me saying this. They are growing in popularity. Samsung is projecting a 50% increase. Pixel Fold is selling better than they thought it was. OnePlus Open is going to sell really well. I promise you of that. This segment, this brand new segment is exploding. And with it, it's opening up the door 
to the stuff that I'm talking about. So there you go, guys. That's why I'm optimistic about the future for Android tablets, but I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments down below. Go ahead and subscribe for more content just like this. I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friend.